Hello, boys and girls. Happy Easter. Uh, it's kind of sad that we can't be together today at church, but on such an important Sunday, I wanted to make sure we were still able to do something together. So today, I actually need your help in telling me the Bible story. You are going to go on a scavenger hunt around your house. You're going to look for 12 different things, and those different things are going to help us um, tell the story today. And if you don't want to do a scavenger hunt, you could maybe ask your mom and dad, and I bet you have some Easter eggs laying around, and mom and dad could find the things and put them inside the Easter eggs, and then they could hide the 12 eggs and see if you can find them. All right, so you can choose. You could do a scavenger hunt where you go and find the things all by yourself, or you could ask mom and dad for help. They can find the things and put them in an Easter egg and hide the Easter eggs, and then you can look for the Easter eggs. So this is our list of things you need to find for the scavenger hunt. So here's our Easter scavenger hunt. The first thing you need to find is a leaf. See if you can find a leaf. The second thing you need to find is three dimes. Then you need to find a cracker, or some bread. Next, you need to find praying hands. After that, find some string or some yarn. After that, you need to find a circle. The seventh thing you need to find are three nails. Then you need to find a dice. You need to find a toothpick or a toy sword or a stick, basically something kind of pointy. You need to find a piece of cloth. You need to find a rock. And the last thing you need to find is nothing. If you want to pause the video, and I tried writing it with a marker. I know it kind of, it shows up backwards. I don't know if this will work a little better. If you want to pause the video, there's your list of things you need to find for your scavenger hunt. So you can pause it. And then once you've found all of your things, bring them back over and I'll tell you the story. All right, I hope you were able to find all 12 things. Some of them I bet were pretty easy to maybe put some clues together and maybe guess what our story is going to be about. And of course, since it's Easter, we need to tell the Easter story. So the first thing you were supposed to find was a leaf. Now here's my leaf. So. Jesus and his disciples, they came into Jerusalem, and when they came in, everybody started grabbing leaves off of trees and uh, waving them around and throwing them on the ground for Jesus and his disciples to walk on, and they're going crazy, and they're yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest, and it was like this awesome parade, and everybody was so excited that Jesus was coming into town. Everybody loved Jesus. It was a great and happy day. That's what your leaf is for, for Palm Sunday. But then our story takes a sad turn. You should have found three dimes. Now dimes are worth 10 cents. So you have 10, 20, 30, 30 silver pieces. One of Jesus's disciples named Judas was not really Jesus's friend. And he went to the Pharisees, the bad guys that had been looking for a way to catch Jesus. And he said, I can tell you where to find Jesus and when to find Jesus. And you can arrest him because the Pharisees were jealous. All these people loved Jesus so much. And Jesus was telling people that maybe the Pharisees weren't as good a guys as they pretended to be. And the Pharisees didn't like that. They missed the attention, they were jealous. And they were scared of what Jesus was saying. They didn't want to listen to him. So Judas sold the disciples, or Judas, sorry, Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Said, I'll help you find him and I'll tell you where you can arrest him. Now, after that had happened, you should find your cracker. So Jesus and his disciples got to have one last meal together. And Jesus told them, in a little while, I'm going to be gone. My body is going to be broken. And he broke bread to help the disciples remember that. But he also told them he would be coming back. After
after you found your cracker, you should find some praying hands. I don't have any praying hands, so I'm going to use mine. After his last supper with his disciples, Jesus, his heart was feeling kind of, kind of sad, kind of worried, kind of scared. And so he wanted to do what we should do when we feel that way. He wanted to talk to God. So he took his disciples to a garden and Jesus went off by himself and he prayed. He prayed for God to help him be strong. He prayed for God to give him the courage he needed to face what terrible things were going to be happening next. And when Jesus was done praying, he was arrested and they took him into jail. And now you're gonna get your string. Your string is like the whip. The Pharisees and the jailers, the people who arrested Jesus, they took a whip and they whipped Jesus with them and they hit him with it over and over and over. And they hurt Jesus very, very badly. He was bleeding all over. And after they whipped Jesus, next you should have your circle. The circle is a crown. Now, normally when we think of a crown, we think, oh, yes, a king, big, important, special person. He wears a crown. Well, Jesus had said he was the king of the Jews, and he is. He's not just the king of the Jews now. He's the king of the whole world. But the Pharisees and the jailers, they were looking at this man who had been beaten and whipped and bloodied, and they said, you don't look like a king. And they started making fun of him. And they went to a thorn bush and they ripped some of the branches out and they put them together and they made a crown of thorns. And they took that crown of thorns and they pushed it on top of Jesus's head and he started bleeding even more. And then after the crown of thorns, you should have your three nails. And we know what happened with these three nails. They took Jesus and they nailed him up onto a cross. Jesus, who was perfect, who had never done anything wrong in his entire life, Jesus was nailed onto that cross. And the Son of God, he could have came down off that cross if he wanted to, but he stayed up there because of his love for us. And so while Jesus was up hanging on the cross, your next thing you should have found was a dice. Now, some of the soldiers who had been there and had arrested Jesus, when they arrested him, they'd taken all of his stuff, his clothes, and maybe if he like, had some sandals or even a bag to carry some of his stuff. When he got arrested, the soldiers took all that stuff. And so this dice is they would roll the dice called casting lots, and they were trying to play a game to be able to win Jesus's clothes and shoes. So while Jesus was hanging on the cross, dying for them, they were gambling to try and get his clothes and his shoes. All right, the next thing you should have found was a toothpick. Well, I didn't quite have a toothpick. This is my floss stick. So Jesus hung on the cross, and then he died. To make sure that he was dead, the soldiers who were out there with him, they took a sword, and they stabbed it in Jesus' side just to make sure that Jesus really was dead. And then they took his body down off the cross and some of his friends, here's your next thing, they got a cloth and they wrapped Jesus' body up. And then your next thing, they buried him in a tomb. So not underground, like we would bury people nowadays. It was like a cave and they put a big rock in front of the cave so no one could get in and no one could get out. Now, your last thing was nothing. Because after three days, some of Jesus' friends came back to visit and they got there and the stone was gone. It had been rolled away. And when they peeked inside, not only was the stone gone and rolled away, Jesus was gone. His body wasn't there anymore. He had risen from the dead. So our story started happy, had a pretty sad middle part, but then it ends happy too. Jesus loves us so much. He stayed on that cross and he died for our sins, for the bad things that I do, for the bad things that you do. He stayed on that cross and died for our sins. 
Now, I have a really cool story to read you. This is called God's Very Good Idea. And it's written by Trilla Newbell, and it's illustrated by Catalina, um, I don't know how to say her last name exactly, but a Churvy, I think. And um, this is also the Easter story, but it's told in a little bit different way than I think you might be used to. God's very good idea, a true story about God's delightfully different family. In the beginning, in fact, before the beginning, God had a very good idea. It was even better than chocolate chip cookies. The super soaker, color TV, fireworks, roller skates, the life raft, the x-ray machine. Those are some pretty good ideas. God's idea is even better. God's idea was to make people, lots of people, lots of different people who would all enjoy loving him and all enjoy loving each other. They would all be made in his image. They would all be like mirrors, reflecting what God is like. Because God is full of love, they would be full of love too. So everybody, no matter what we look like, no matter what we sound like, no matter what we like to do, everybody, is in God's image because everybody has love in their heart like God does. So God got to work. He made a beautiful world for people to live in. Then he made the first people, a man and a woman. And he said to them, be happy, enjoy loving me and loving each other. Have a huge family that will fill the earth and look after the earth and enjoy the earth. This is called the Garden of Eden. It was a perfect place with no sin. What a wonderful place to live in that would be. God carried on creating people. All of them were made in his image and all of them were different too. Some were men and some were women. Some liked reading and some liked riding bikes. Some had darker skin, and some had lighter skin. Some had curly hair, and some had straight hair. Aren't you glad God made people all different? It'd be pretty boring if we were all the same. We live in God's world. We are all different, but we are also all the same. Everyone you see is different than you, and the same as you. They might look different or speak different or play different, but they are all made in God's image. So they are all valuable. This is God's very good idea. But people ruined God's very good idea. The first people chose not to love God. This is called sin. And because they chose not to love God as they should, they forgot how to love each other as well. So there we are back in the Garden of Eden, God's first people. He told them, don't eat this one fruit from this one tree. And God said no, but Adam and Eve did it anyway. And that was the first sin. That was the first time somebody didn't do what God told, or so many didn't obey God. We are the same. We choose not to love God. And so we are not able to love each other like we should. We sin. Sometimes we treat others badly because they are different than us. People fight with each other. People are mean to each other. People laugh at each other. So not only did Adam and Eve sin and do something bad, we choose not to love God. 
and we sin too. When we fight with someone else, when we laugh at someone else, when we're mean to someone else, if we tell a lie, if we don't listen to what our moms and dads tell us to do, those are all sins. That's us telling God that we don't love him. And if we don't love God, we can't have him in our heart. Because we have ruined God's very good idea, he is not pleased with us. Our sin means we can't be friends with him or enjoy living with him. We need God's forgiveness for ruining his very good idea. It's the same for everyone in the world. People who like reading need forgiveness, and people who like riding bikes need forgiveness. People with darker skin need forgiveness, and people with lighter skin need forgiveness. People with curly hair need forgiveness, and people with straight hair need forgiveness. So because of the sin that lives in our heart, we can't be friends with God, we can't live with God. God lives in heaven, but we can't go there, not if our, if our heart has sin in it. So we need forgiveness for that sin. But God was not surprised by people ruining things. He had always had a very good plan to rescue his very good idea. So God got to work. He came to earth as a person, Jesus. Jesus loved people who were different than him. He loved people who no one else loved. And we can see Jesus loving some people, a woman who was sick. He tells her, your faith has made you well. Here we see a man who was blind and couldn't see. Now, after Jesus has healed him, I can see. He also enjoyed loving all the different people he met. Jesus shows us how to enjoy loving each other. You can see here, these kids are reading about Jesus, and how he shows us how to love each other. You can find that in the Bible. But people didn't love Jesus. Instead, they hated him. They put him on a cross to die. But this was part of God's plan. On the cross, Jesus took our sin so that we can be forgiven. Jesus forgives his people for their sins. So because of the cross, because of Jesus dying, our heart that is full of sin can be made whole again. And that means if we have a clean heart with no sin in it, we can go to heaven and we can live with God there. Now, that doesn't just happen. Just because Jesus died, we don't, it's not like, oh, okay, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm all good. Jesus took care of it. Yes, Jesus did take care of it, but you have a job to do too. You need to pray to Jesus. You need to talk to him. You need to tell him that you know you're a sinner. You know you do bad things. And those bad things are keeping you apart from him. But while you are a sinner and you know your heart has done bad things, you also know that Jesus, God's son, came here to earth and he never sinned. He never did one thing wrong. He never stole something. He never told a lie. He never argued with his brother and sister. He never disobeyed his parents. His whole life, he never did one thing wrong. So when he died on the cross, he took our place. Because he was perfect, he could take your sins and my sins and be punished for them. And if we pray to Jesus and say, I know I'm a sinner. I know God's son Jesus came here to earth. And he was perfect and he died for my sins. Lord, please forgive me for my sins. If you pray to God and you talk to him about that, then your heart will become clean. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose back to life 
and then went back to live in heaven. And then he gave his people his spirit to help them enjoy loving him and loving all the different people they know. Jesus helps us to love each other. We have Jesus in our heart. It's easier to show that love to other people. One day, God will finish his very good idea. Jesus will come back and make the world perfect again. And anyone who has asked Jesus to forgive them will live there with their different languages and skin colors. They will enjoy loving God and loving each other. They will enjoy praising God for making, rescuing, and finishing his very good idea. But here's a very, very, very good part of God's very good idea. You don't have to wait until then to enjoy it. Jesus welcomes anyone who asks him to forgive them. And when Jesus welcomes someone, he welcomes them into his family forever. He welcomes people who like reading and people who like riding bikes. He welcomes people with darker skin and people with lighter skin. He welcomes people with curly hair and people with straight hair. God's family is called the church. Your church friends are your brothers and sisters, your wonderful and colorful church family. You can enjoy loving them and loving God with them. This is God's very good idea. Lots of different people enjoying loving him and loving each other. So remember, God made it, people ruined it. He rescued it, he will finish it. And with your church family, you can enjoy being part of it right now. What a wonderful story. If you have any questions about that story or about how to help clean your heart and get rid of the sin that's in there so that you can be friends with God and love God again, talk with your mom and dad about that. Now, last thing I have for you, if you wanna make a craft today, all you will need is some crayons, a paper plate, and a black or dark piece of paper. And you can make this very cool craft. This is the cross that Jesus died on for us. It's black, it's sad, that's where our sin is. But behind that, beyond the cross, we see all these bright and beautiful colors because the story doesn't end with the cross. The story doesn't end with Jesus dying. He comes back and he's in heaven right now getting it ready for us and he's waiting for us, anxious to see us. You just need to make sure that you are ready to see him too. So remember, here's the cross. It's dark, it's black, it's sad. That's where all of our sin went. But with Jesus' help, we can go beyond the cross. It doesn't stop there. Jesus came back. He died for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he came back. Well, I miss you all, and I can't wait until we get to be together in church again. Until then, stay healthy, and remember, Jesus loves you.